appropriate. That's appropriate. That's appropriate. Um, well, I was gonna ask how you guys are doing. That feels rhetorical at this point. I, uh, I think I had the greatest summer of my life, guys. This summer, I went to Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in Lake Conroe, Texas. Yeah. 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 It's the saddest place in the world right now, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen a flip-flop at half mass, but I have. It's terrifying. But Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in Lake Conroe, Texas is everything that you want it to be. They have a swingers only section, it's the whole place. Yeah, it's real. The Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in Lake Conroe, Texas, they have a, a, an entire pool that was designated as just a swim up bar pool. And you bet your ass, if you're gonna be at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in Lake Conroe, Texas, I am gonna keep saying the full title. Because they're a sponsor of this podcast. And if you enter visor at checkout, you get another visor. That's how it works. So I'm at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in LCT. I get into this pool, this Texas pool, swim up bar pool, and it is hot. It is so hot in this pool. I swim up to the bartender and I go, hey guys, why do you heat this pool? And he goes, we don't, you people do, yeah. Then he dared me to drink the water. And I have a rash that won't go away, guys. Because you don't say no to a dare where I'm from. So I'm sitting there at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort, Lake Conroe, Texas. I'm at the swim up bar, I'm just drinking Miami Vice. If you don't know what that is, this is not the time to fix your life. But you should get on it. I'm sitting there. Mind my own business, when next to me, just mid-drag, I hear, well, well, well. <laughs> and I turn to look, and I just see the most 79-year-old, leather-skinned, silver-haired fox of a woman. Her bangs are bigger than the St. Louis Arch, guys. <laughs> and I, I look over at her, and she goes, there you are. <laughs> I go, yeah, I'm right here. And then, I don't know the last time any of you guys have held hands with an old person, but she just took that raw chicken bone of a finger. <laughs> old people's hands are always wet. I don't know why. They have the driest skin in the world, but their hands always feel like used bones, okay? <laughs> she, she takes that finger and she just runs it down my ribs. <laughs> and she goes, they're both real. And I go, your boobs? And she goes, my hips, baby doll. And we're still together. We are still together. Janet Fox, dudes. Janet Fox, guys. And she calls me Peg because that's okay to like things. That's all right. <laughs> So I'm sitting there at JB's uh, Margaritaville Resort in uh, Lake Conroe, Texas. Right, I'm sitting there, Janet's jerking me off, and uh, they encourage it, they encourage it. And I hear like a ruckus, like a commotion behind me while I'm sitting at the bar. And it's, I already know what it is. It's just two 67-year-old white men fighting over a puka shell necklace. I already know that, I already know that. But I was surprised when I turned around because it wasn't that at all, guys. It was a woman. Not just a woman, a mother. And she was fighting her like 10 year old son. And I don't mean like, ah, I gotcha. I mean like, come on, what the fuck you wanna do? Like <laughs> full on fighting this kid. And then she grabs the kid and she holds him underwater. And she's like, he's fighting. She's holding him with her big old Texas tits. She got a string bikini, right? And she's just holding him under. And she, this kid's underwater so long that even though it's none of your business, right? You just wanna, I just wanted so badly just be like, Ma'am, real quick, right? But before I can do anything, this kid's fighting for his life. She brings him up, he goes, <gasps> and then she goes, now you can hunt. And I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's like weird 
weird Texas Game of Thrones shit. Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort, Lake Conroe, Texas. It changed who I am as a person. It affected me. I mean it. Ever since I went there, I've just been obsessed with having a three-way. It's all I want. I've never had one. And it was so hard never having one. I'm in the lazy river. There's four of them going on while I'm in there. They got signs up all along. It says, there's two rules. The current never stops and neither does the touching, guys. So I'm, I, I don't care. This is an album. This is a special. I'm still going to do it. I'm just putting it out there, okay? I'm putting it out. I'm looking for a third. I'm looking for a third. I don't have the second either, but the third is the hardest part to get. If I can find a third, motherfucker, we can get a second, no problem. Seconds are easy. The third is the hard one to get. I, I don't care, that goes dudes too. Let's get weird, that's fine. Hey, if there's any guys out there that wanna do the devil's high five, I'm in, let's do it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That, hey, that's just the Jimmy talking. That's just the Jimmy talking. But the last trip I took before, uh, fuck, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Resort in Lake Conroe, Texas. It was the complete opposite of going there. It was opposite in every, every aspect, opposite of location, opposite of time, because I travel a lot for work. But I very rarely do anything that is just me, exactly what I want to do, N just get away, right? And the place that I went, well, first of all, it was June 2020. Yeah. Remember that golden era of Americana, guys? Remember that time we were living in when we knew that in the future they would skip this chapter in Florida history class? Remember that? G2020 was dark, guys. It was a horrible time. We didn't know anything. Nobody knew anything. But I knew at that point, I just had to get out of my house. I just had to get away. I had to, right? I had listened to enough true crime podcasts to figure out I definitely could kill someone and get away with it. <laughs> they tell you how everybody else screwed up, guys. Just don't do that. <laughs> don't touch the receipt at the parking garage and you'll be fine. We all know this. So... <laughs> I had to get away, and I live in California, which <laughs> I'm always hesitant to say because nowadays you say that and then somebody goes, what the hell, and then they punch you in the face. And I don't, <laughs> I hate that. I live in California and, and you're supposed to like be like ashamed of it. We're in this weird stage in our country right now where we're in this like mean girl stage where all the states are mean to each other and like pick at each other and judge each other just based on where you're from. And it's like, can we, all not do that. I mean, we'll still judge Indiana, but the rest of it. <laughs> you drive through there, guys? You drive through there? You're like, oh, look, another town with the word white in it. <laughs> That's just geographical humor. That's all that is. But I don't even want to be mean to any of the states that deserve it. I don't want to be mean to the states that don't deserve it. I, I, I'm sick of this. Like, I get it. California, everything's way too expensive. Most of it's on fire. Half the state's gonna fall into the ocean. We all have our problems, right? <laughs> in fact, if, while I'm on this, if I could just say, we were living a time right now where everybody is like, care about this and care about that. You didn't know about this was happening. Well, guess what you need to care about? And there are some things, uh, granted, I want us to care about. But if it were up to me, so much of this country would just start caring a whole lot less, like way less, <laughs> just tone it down. Just start, just start talking to people about normal stuff again. If I could change one thing, you know what I would love to change? Let's just get rid of clothing that starts arguments. That's what I would love. <laughs> Can we just stop wearing clothes that will have one purpose and that's to piss off somebody who doesn't think like you? There are dudes every day, they think their, their kids come to get them for dinner and they walk out and they're like, check this out. <laughs> I'm gonna piss these people off. And you guys are misjudging him because he's wearing an I'm with her shirt, right? <laughs> and those poor kids are like, we're doing this, Dad. We're doing this tonight. We just can't go to the Applebee's and get food poisoning. We can't do that tonight. We gotta piss off everybody at the Applebee's except for the one woman who has crystals and looks like Stevie Nicks. That's gonna be your friend. That's your one ally. 
I just don't want to do, I don't want to argue that. I don't want to know about you. I don't want, I don't, this goes both ways. I don't want to know who you voted for. I just want to get along with you. Keep it to yourself. I just want to sit on this plane, get drunk on Jack Daniels, learn about what it's like for you to sell carpet and hold hands if there's turbulence. That's all I want to do. I was sitting in an airport recently. I could make one up so that somebody feels like they have something to identify with. So pretend it's yours, okay? I really don't remember which one it was, but I was sitting in this airport, because you see this everywhere, and across from me was two men, an old guy and a young guy. They were a couple seats apart. They didn't even know each other existed. They're in their own world, right? But I look at the old guy, and he's wearing a Trump 2016 shirt, okay? And then two seats down from him is this younger guy wearing a Chicago Cubs 2016 World Series hat. And I wanted to walk up to both of these gentlemen and just say, let it go, just let it go. <laughs> I get it, it was a good year, but it's been very bad since. So just let it go. Both of you, stop, stop. <laughs> stop. And I went to two of those World Series games and I had to let it go, so you do too, buddy. <laughs> so, I wanted to get away. Yeah, we're telling that story. I, I wanted to get away, I live in California, and like I said, everybody, it's, it's good to like rip on California now, but if you get like an hour outside of Los Angeles, you see very quickly why Frank Sinatra sings a song about that state. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's wonderful. And they have some great destinations where you can go, and I picked one that I love, and that is called Big Bear, California. And Big Bear, yes, Big Bear is awesome. Big Bear is everything you want it to be, especially if you're from where I'm from and you live in LA. Because Big Bear is like if California had its own little Wisconsin. That's what Big Bear is like. I mean it, guys, I mean it. They, they, all, they all pretend to be nice, the food is brown, they grow their own racism. It's very, feels like home, right? You guys have no idea. I don't think that this country understands just how crazy Wisconsin is. <laughs> I'm trying to let people know, thank God that we're recording this because it, people need to be made aware of what is happening in the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin is like if the United States took one of its states and decided, you know what, let's just make that whole place a Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville <laughs> resort. And somebody was like, yeah, but they have winter. They go, oh, don't worry, they'll find a way. They'll find a way. They'll find a way to get drunk on the water. It's frozen. I said what I said. Wisconsin's wild. Wild. Do you guys know what the legal drinking age is in the state of Wisconsin? Does anybody know? Feel free to say it if you know. What's that? 12? I heard of 15? 14? Okay, awesome. This, uh, I feel like a cool auctioneer. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys are beautiful, innocent people, and I'm gonna tell you that the legal drinking age in the state of Wisconsin is, there isn't one. <laughs> and you're like, what? That's a lie. No, you can take your phone out and look it up. Do it at the next comedy show you go to. <laughs> Not this recording. There isn't one. Now look, you have to be 21 to go and do a quick trip or a Piggly Wiggly and buy some liquor or something like that, right? But. Here's the rule, the wrinkle is this. It is up th to the discretion of the bartender to allow any minor to consume alcohol when accompanied by a legal guardian. I did not say parent, I did not, yeah. So that means the uncle who owes everybody money can get these kids shit-faced tonight. Right now in Wisconsin, there's a gaggle of teens getting hammered on Harvey wall bangers and you guys don't even know what that drink is. But they do, and they're gonna fight a waitress tonight. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I heard a lot of uh, guesses that were uh, close, if not almost right, directionally right, because the age that actually everyone is sort of agreed upon in the state of Wisconsin is 14. 14 is the age, yeah, 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 that they agree upon, and the reason that 14 is the age that they agreed upon is because you only have to be 14 to work in any restaurant or bar in the state of Wisconsin. Which is essentially everyone just saying, hey, you're gonna fuck a line cook, you might as well be drunk. 
You might as well be drunk, Caden. You might as well be drunk. Sit down, Caden. Sit down. 14. Guys, of the 50 drunkest counties in the United States of America, do you know how many Wisconsin makes up? 39. Yeah, 39. I would love to tell you they make up the top 10. That'd be a lie, guys. Because they make up the top 11. Yeah. Wisconsin went spinal tap on getting drunk as a county. It's wild up there. It's wild, and nobody talks about it. America has a Cancun. It's Wisconsin. And nobody talks about it, guys. There are people that don't even know what the Wisconsin Dells is. Yeah. I have to tell them on planes all the time. I go, here's it. Basically, it's this. It's a, if Las Vegas and Branson, Missouri had a one-night stand, and they were forced to keep the child. <laughs> That's the Wisconsin Dells. The only reason it exists is for divorced parents to exchange kids for the weekend. That's it. <laughs> People need to know. They have a, a casino right next to the Dells, right? It's called Ho-Chunk Casino which sounds like the meanest thing you could call a woman from Wisconsin. <laughs> but that's fine, actually, because that's indigenous people. That's their tribe, Ho-Chunk Casino. Okay, fine, just a wild, fun coincidence, all right? <laughs> but do you know what they did? You know what the strip club is called right next to Ho-Chunk Casino? <laughs> Some of you know, and you feel bad about it. And you feel bad about it because you've laughed at the sign and you feel bad about it because you've been there. And that's, you should feel bad. But for everybody else who can hear my voice, the name that they gave the strip club next to Ho-Chunk Casino by the Wisconsin Dells is Cruisin' Chubbies. <laughs> Cruising Chubbies. If we were making a movie together, you guys would go, that's too much, Daniel. You know, draw that back a little bit. People aren't gonna believe it. Cruising Chubbies. What are we doing? You're not even stopping. You're just going by being like, I see you, you beautiful, overweight, sexy woman. What is that? But the pinnacle, the pastime of Wisconsin living is meat raffles. Yeah. yeah, meat raffles. Meat raffles is just every bar in the state of Wisconsin at least one night a week, except bars in those uppity cities of Milwaukee and Madison. <laughs> every bar one night a week in the state of Wisconsin has a meat raffle. And it's just people going in to a bar to try and win room temperature meat <laughs> that has not been graded by the FDA. I bring this up to educate and to also let all of you know that as of this summer, you're looking at a seven-time meat raffle champion. <laughs> I did it, guys, I did it. And you never forget your first which is also the slogan of Cruising Chubbies, if you ever... <laughs> the first meat raffle I ever won, I was in a town called Partyville. Yeah. Take a step back and think about that. It's called Partyville. The people making the maps are alcoholics, guys. I'm in a town called Partyville. I'm in a bar called Caddyshack because Wisconsin doesn't give a shit about copyright law. <laughs> I walk in, I get handed a ticket. About five minutes later, they read off a number. I go, hey, that's my number. And the guy goes, well, that means you're a winner. And I said, I don't know what other outcome it could have been. <laughs> I said, what happens next? And he goes, you get to go out to the van with Gary and pick your meat. <laughs> This is real. It's 
true. Just a word of caution because I care if you are any woman or a person of color or just value your life, do not go to a van with a guy named Gary to pick out meat. Don't do that. I did that, and if you've never figured out what it is, this is what white privilege looks like. I get to do that. So I went out to a gravel parking lot with a guy named Gary. We were out there 15 minutes. He talked about his divorce twice. We hugged three times. He cried once, and I got five pounds of walleye. Yeah. Wisconsin is wild, guys. So I go up to Big Bear. Yeah, we're still telling that story. So I go up to Big Bear, June 2020, right? We didn't know anything. Nobody knew anything. This, stuff. this is that window of time where New Orleans was scared, guys. June 2020. We hadn't learned anything yet, all right? So I'm in a CVS. Everybody's all masked up because they didn't know. Nobody knew. We didn't have any tests. We didn't understand anything. It was June 2020. Everybody's all masked up because they didn't know. No one knew. We didn't know yet that Biden created this. <laughs> we learned, we learned, and that's what I'm here to talk about tonight. I've got charts. Somebody comes in late, they're like, are they doing a rally in here? And I'm like, don't leave, hey, don't leave. I barely graduated high school, but now I do my own research. <laughs> So I, I'm in Big Bear, June 2020. We're all masked up, right? I'm in the CVS, and, uh, and there's an old timer, like, working the register. And he goes, next. So I go walking up there, and he kind of gives me the once over as I walk up. And I get up there to him, he goes, hey. I go, how's it going? He goes, do me a favor. I go, what's that? He goes, why don't you take that mask off? I go, what? And he goes, your mask. Take it off. I go, look at that. I'm good. He goes, let's get that mask off. <laughs> and I get it, guys. I get it. Because if you look at me and don't know me, but you just look at me, you're pretty sure you know where I was on January 6th. <laughs> I get it. And if you guessed Cheesecake Factory, you'd be correct. <laughs> you'd be correct. <laughs> there was a thing recently that said Cheesecake Factory is the worst place to go on a date. Everybody who thinks that is single, okay? <laughs> because if you have never sat across from a person you love while they eat a burrito and you eat four cheese pasta with chicken added and you've both finished off like a whole platter of lettuce tacos, if you haven't done that, you don't know what love is, okay? <laughs> but I get why this guy did it to me. I get it because I'm just, look at me. I'm just a basic version of every white guy. I'm just a white guy starter kit that you ordered the game early and I came with a beard. That's what it is. That's me. I'm just level one of a white guy. You just turn the game on and it's this. Somebody walks in, they're like, what game are you playing? You're like, I don't know. You start out with this ugly white guy, which is a lie, because I'm a Midwestern 10, God damn it. Okay. Yeah. And I'm an LA 11, and I'm an LA 11, and you know why? You know why? Because I can fix a doorknob. That's why, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm handyman in my way into touching boobs, guys. <laughs> oh. But I am just a basic white guy. I'm, this, this is it, guy. Like, if you look like, you gotta understand, if you're a guy with a shaved head and a beard, it's a different world out there. Every bar I stand in at any time of day, people just hand me IDs all day long. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I do not work here. I don't work here. If I go to any like downtown area of any city, you don't know the amount of nods I get from every cop all day long. Like, hey, I'm like, how's it going? They're like, might need you out there. I go, I'm not on the force, dude. Okay, Donnie Brasco, I'm not undercover, man. I'm just a basic white guy. I'm just a basic white guy. I'll, I'll go this far too. You're not supposed to admit this, you're supposed to be ashamed of it. I don't care, I'll wear it like a badge. Not only am I a basic white guy, I am a basic bitch. Yeah, I am, I am. I'm so basic that if after this show, if any of you were to say to me, Daniel, 
come on back to our place with us. I'd go with you. Yeah. <laughs> not because of the whole third thing. That's an option, but that's not why. <laughs> I'd go with you, and all you would have to do is promise my basic bitch ass one thing. That when we get to your house, we're gonna watch whatever's on HGTV. That's all I need. Just give me a fat guy with a beard and a little petite wife selling anything home related. They'd be selling sinks. I don't care, call it faucet flippers. I'll watch all nine seasons tonight. I love HGTV so much. I created drinking games built around my favorite HGTV shows. And they will ruin your life, guys. Because the first one is called Slopperty Brothers. Yeah. You have to drink every time Jonathan touches his hair or Drew touches his belt, and you don't know which is which. Guys. You don't know which is which. And if their brother shows up, there's a third one. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a magician. That's just a thing you know. That's not even a joke. If he shows up, you have to take an entire bottle of rosé, you have to freeze it, which then makes... Rose. These are my girls, right here. That's why they sat up close. <laughs> the other one, if you guys want to pretend that we're in college for one more night and have a power hour that'll send us straight into the basement, we can do it. <laughs> but it's called House Chuggers and House Chuggers International. <laughs> It'll ruin your life, guys. I, I don't think anybody's ever won. Every time I've played it, we just go until we all start writing letters to our exes and playing Miranda Lambert as loud as we can. <laughs> it's a great game. It's a great game. So I'm in Big Bear. We're still telling this story, guys. So I'm in Big Bear, and uh, this guy, he's being mean to me. Right? And he's like, take that mask off. And I go, I, I don't wanna. And he goes, let's get that mask off. And I go, no. And then he goes, let's get that mask off. In my experience, any man who goes, makes his own bullets, okay? And I don't wanna be mean to this guy. I don't wanna be mean to this old dude. In fact, I, I would say I'm very nice to old people, all right? I mean, look what I've done with Janet, you guys. <laughs> But I mean it, I, I try to be good and nice to our elderly. In fact, I would say maybe if we compared notes, I might be one of the nicest people to old people in this room, okay? Because a few years before this, I was in Hawaii, which is number three on the list of favorite destinations for basic bitches. <laughs> the top two both have Disney in the title. So I was in Hawaii, I still wore my ears, but I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> the real ones are, they get that. I'm in Hawaii and I had rented this like, uh, like a, a great condo, right? And it was right, right on the ground floor and it opened, up, uh, it opened up to this nice area that I kept calling a patio and they kept calling a lanai. And I don't think I'll ever change. And I'm, I'm sitting on there, and it's like, it's like there's some yard, and there's uh, a pool, and then there's the ocean. It's amazing. It's, it's wonderful, right? And I hear a sound that you never want to hear by any body of water, right? I hear, help. And I was like, what? And then I hear it again, help. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, please, just be an overdramatic woman who's run out of poop bags, please. <laughs> Then I hear it again. Help! So I stand up. I run all the way to the to the to the edge of the one eye, and I look out of the water and I see a woman flailing, just screaming for help. But she's not screaming for herself, guys. She's screaming for this elderly man next to her who is having a really hard time hanging on to life. And I don't know much about oceans like how they work but they weren't getting sucked out they just couldn't get back in 
and she's screaming for help, and this guy is going under the water and then coming back up, and they're going under and coming back up. He looked like a bobber attached to a smallmouth bass, okay? <laughs> Midwest joke, check. <laughs> and I don't know what came over me. I just sp sprang into action. Literally, I, the t-shirt I was there, I, I, I took it off, I, I, I threw it down, I'm sprinting, I'm running down to the beach, and the whole time I'm running, I'm just thinking to myself, please, somebody film this, somebody film this. <laughs> It doesn't count if nobody films it, guys. It doesn't even count, right? You might as well let him go if nobody films it. So, well, how would they know? So I, I get all the way down to the, to the water's edge, and I look, and that's when I realize that there is a, like a reef and rocks between me and them, so I can't swim straight out to where they are. And so I turn to start running down the beach to where I can get in the water. And right as I turn, I see another guy coming down the beach, jumping into the water. And I have never been more pissed off in my life <laughs> to see a hero. I've never been more mad, right? So I run all the way down to where he got in the water. I jump in the water. They're about a third of the way back in, okay? It's him and this old guy. And I swim out. And the dude's got the old guy, like, holding on around his neck. And I go, hey, man. Do you need any help? Can I do anything? And the guy goes, yeah, dude. I, maybe he can hold on to your neck too, right? So then the guy grabs onto both of our necks. And I go, dude, I'm just happy to help. And he's like, I don't think I could do it without you. And I was like, cool, please tell everyone that <laughs> when we get to the beach. You have to say that again. So we start swimming and the old guy's like hanging on around our necks. We're swimming. We look like a deleted scene from Weekend at Bernie's. We're going in. Good reference, good reference, good reference. So proud. That is a test. So we're swimming in, we're swimming in. We get all the way up into like the wash, right? Where the foam is, it's like ankle, ankle high water. And we, we take the old guy and we stand him all the way up on him. He's like, oh, you know, we get him up onto his feet, right? And I take a step back and I look and the guy next to me, right? The other hero, uh, cause there's two. Um, <laughs> the other hero, I would later find out his name was Randy, okay? And, and I, I sit back, and maybe some of you guys have ever been in a situation like this, and you'll know exactly what I'm about to describe. But I look at Randy, and Randy looks at me, and the adrenaline just drops all the way through the floor, and the emotion just shoots up through the roof, right? And I, I look at this guy, this, who I do not know, and he looks back at me, and we, we just, hug, not even hug, we embrace. I'm talking full on nipple to nipple, hips to hips. <laughs> Just like holding on to each other, you know what I mean? Just like full on. If any of you walked by at that very moment, you'd be like, babe, 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 babe. They just got engaged. They just got, cause it's Hawaii. Cause it's Hawaii, David. They just got it. We support you. We support you. Sinners. And so, So I'm holding on to Randy, right? And Randy's holding on to me. And, uh, and I look over at the old guy who we just saved. And he is now face down in the water, <laughs> drifting back out to sea. Yeah, yeah. Randy and I celebrated too early, okay? We are the Atlanta Falcons of this story. And that joke will never get old. And if you are watching this or listening to it, stop it. Look up Atlanta Falcons. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the joke I just made. So I break away from Randy, right? And I run over to the old guy and I grab him like Forrest Gump and Bubba in the jungle, right? I just, I pick him up and he's all out of it, you know? And I pick him up and he's like, oh, oh, what happened, what happened? And I go, I'll tell you what happened. Randy stopped caring about you. <laughs> and I didn't. Because I like old people. <laughs> so I'm in Big Bear. We're still doing this. <laughs> oh, now you know why all my report cards said talks a lot. <laughs> I'm in Big Bear. This old guy's being mean to me. And uh, that's actually kind of the end of the story, now that I think about it. Well, I mean, he goes, take your mask off. I go, I don't want to. And he goes, take it off, just do it. And so then I said, all right, I thought to myself, fine, man, you wanna dance? Let's dance. And I go, you want me to take it off? And he goes, take it off. I go, fine, I'll do it. He goes, thank God. I go, no problem, there's one thing. And he goes, you say it, brother. And I go, 
I have COVID. And he goes, put that mask back on. And I go, I don't want to put it back on. And he goes, you better put it back on. I go, I'm not putting it back on in this CVS. He goes, you shouldn't be in this CVS. I go, don't tell me where to be. And then he goes, you got COVID. You shouldn't even be in public. I go, what? He goes, you shouldn't be outside your house. They should quarantine you and leave meals outside your door. And I said, you trying to tell me how to live my goddamn American life? And then he and I switched who we were in this story. Then he goes, he goes, oh, you, you told me you have COVID. And I said, I know. Think of all the people who come in here and don't tell you. And then he froze and like a blood teardrop came out of his eye. His brain fell into his ass. He looked like a 14 year old that you let get high and watch the Matrix for the first time. He didn't know what was real anymore. I changed him. It's not that hard to change the world, guys. You just have to be meaner than they are dumb. That's all you have to do. Thank you. I deserve it. Oh. I do want to make the world a better place. I would love to. I've actually started a thing in my own life. If you want to start doing it as well, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, you can. But this is how I want to make the world a better place. First off, I hate old people. Not the end of the sentence. <laughs> Although if our country proved anything in the past few years, we are very com si com sa on old people. <laughs> I, I, I hate old people who say the most mean, hurtful, racist, bigoted shit, and when you get upset by it, somebody puts their hand on your leg, and they go, Daniel, they call you my name. This isn't a perfect story. <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> they call you my name. They go, Daniel, let it go. They're from a different time. No, they're not. No, they're not. You want to know how I know they're not from a different time? Because they're not dead yet. That's how I know they're not from a different time. There's only one person who's ever been from a different time, and that was Marty McFly. Yeah. Yeah. And his mom tried to rape him, guys. So it's not good to be from a different time. Nobody's from a different time. I know that for a fact. I have a living breathing proof of you are the time that you live in. You're not from a different time. That living, breathing, breathing proof is 93 years old. She's in Rochelle, Illinois. Her name is Rosemary Van Kirk, and she is from this time. She is, guys. She's from this time. She's 93 years old. She loves doing two things. She loves watching Jeopardy and calling me. And I am ignoring her calls for you guys tonight. <laughs> At 93 years old, all she does is love, guys. That's it. You think about it. 93, she was born in 1930, which might be the worst time to start your time in America. 1930, by the time that she was 15, she had lived through an entire depression and a world war. And if any of you guys have young kids, they're probably gonna get the same chance. But that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. She was born in 1930, guys. 1930, when indoor plumbing was a rumor and a fancy Christmas meant you got your own apple, okay? That was the time that she lived in. And as she grew up, all she did was just keep loving people. That's all Rosemary does. She doesn't have to agree with everybody, but all she's gonna do is love them. She learned and evolved. Cruise control blew her mind. She went from an address to an email address and couldn't even understand what was happening. But she learned and she evolved because all she did is love. And in our family, when we had people who were in an interracial relationship, she didn't care. She just kept loving him. When we have people who came out in my family, the LGBTQ uh, plus community, she just loved them. When somebody said, hey, I want to go buy this now, fine, I just love you. She even has one grandchild who goes around the country every night begging strangers to <laughs> validate him through laughter. <laughs> and she still loves that kid, guys. Yeah. And that kid is fucked up, guys. <laughs> And she still loves that kid. That's all she does is just keep loving. She was evolved through all these changes, all these technological things. Guys, even at 93, she didn't stop. At 93 years old, she can FaceTime me. Granted, it's just her nose. But she still does it. 
Because rosemary is gold. People think it's a medal or the name of a tour. No, rose is gold, okay? Rose is gold. So my rule is this. If you want to walk around and pretend that it's 1951 and you're 20 years old and you just get to talk exactly like you did back then and just keep going, well, hey, what do you want me to do? That's my time. I go, okay, fine. I'm not going to try and change who you are. But I'll tell you this. You don't just get the language from that time, buddy. You get all of that time. I mean it. We're going to take asbestos and put it back into your house. <laughs> you love it. Breathe it in. That's your time. You love that time. You can have a car. Cars existed in 1951, but good luck pulling that son of a bitch into the parking lot to get your coffee from McDonald's because that guy don't have power steering, guys. <laughs> but you love that time. You better stop being mean and hateful, Uncle Lou, because if you have another heart attack again, defibrillator panels don't even exist in your time. We're just gonna kick you in the ribs until you get up. And if that doesn't work, congrats, you've never been happier because guess what? That was your time. That, you better stop saying that vaccines make you gay, Uncle Lou, because I'm not a scientist, but I'll tell you what, we're giving you polio again. You love it. You love that, you love that limp. You love that limp. <laughs> oh. I want to tell you guys a feel-good story. And I promise not to deviate this time, <laughs> I think. Um, the year was 2019, which emotionally feels like about seven years ago, okay? <laughs> we lost a lot of cousins since then, guys. Uh, they're not dead, they just don't speak to us anymore. <laughs> that cuts both ways, okay? But it's 2019. And I'm on tour. I'm in a place, a city called Boston, OK? It's real. It's a, it's a real place, yeah. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know, you think I'm just making this up? <laughs> Boston is like if a clenched fist was a town. That's what <laughs> Boston is, OK? <laughs> so I'm in Boston, and I'm doing one of the top five things that they love to do in Boston. Number one, we already all know. Fist fight their family. We know that. We know it. But somewhere in the top five is what I'm doing, and that's looking for parking. They love looking for parking in Boston. They love it, guys. They love it. Do you want to know how they created their roads in Boston? How they laid out their roads? I'll just tell you, you're going to learn something again tonight. All okay? right? You already know about Janet. You know about Wisconsin. You know there's a third brother. And now you know. <laughs> this is going to be on the test, okay? <laughs> and, now, and now you know that the way they got their roads in Boston is they just paved where the horses walked. Yeah, horse paths. That's who laid out their streets. The only animal that is consistently dumb enough to let us ride it. <laughs> laid out the Boston streets. So that explains why they're so angry. Uh, that explains where the anger comes from, okay? It doesn't really explain the racism, but it explains <laughs> where the anger comes from. So I'm in Boston, looking for parking. I take a right-hand turn onto a one-way street. I say that so that you guys understand, I got options, okay? Anything could happen for me. I take a right-hand turn, and as soon as I take it, I see the second best thing that you can see when you're looking for parking. Number one, we already all know, open spot. We all know that. But number two is people getting into their car. Because now you know something that nobody else knows. It feels so good, right? It feels so good, right and up until the point where you realize you're now faced with this human hurdle of what the hell are these people doing in their car? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I'm convinced that there are millions of Americans, they just pay the bill at the restaurant, and somewhere between the restaurant and their car, they forget who they are and where they live, and they have to memento their life back together and do a jigsaw puzzle that has their address on it, okay? So these people put the last piece of puzzle in, and they turn their lights on, and they drive away, and it's a big, beautiful spot for me and my little Toyota Camry, okay? So I, I, I pull up, I'm in my little rental. I'm about to 
back into the spot, I put the car into reverse, and right when I do, I feel a presence outside my passenger window. And I turn to look, and guys, I see the most Boston man you have ever seen in your life. I'm not shitting you, friends. His chin had knuckles. That's how Boston this guy was. He looked like he was born with a flat top and he was wearing the hoodie that he wore the day he got married. That's how Boston this guy is. And he's driving a white 1997 Chevy Tahoe. So you know what that means. He's got a baseball bat, okay? Because Tahoes come with baseball bats. And he's sitting there and he's giving me this, right? Which at this point really should just be this. But it's still this, guys. In fact, I think this movement right here might be the last bipartisan thing our country has. We all agree it's this. So now I'm faced with a decision. Do I pull into this spot and then find out what this good old fashioned street dance is going to be? Or do I engage? And if you've only known me this long, you bet your ass I engaged, guys. But I didn't engage empty handed, all right? I engaged with a greeting, a Midwestern greeting, that when you hear it, it does one of two things. And you, the hearer, get to pick. It either says, hey, what do you need? Or it says, why don't you fuck around and find out, okay? <laughs> yeah. And if you've lived in the Midwest, you're born in the Midwest, you spent time in the Midwest, I, no matter where you're from, even if you just have an Uncle Bob, you've heard this greeting before in your life. You'll know it right when I do it. I roll my windows down and I go, yeah. <laughs> you pick. You pick. Yeah. Am I gonna help you change a tire or am I gonna run you over with your own car? You get to pick. So I go, yeah. And he goes, are you fucking kidding me right now? I go, what? He goes, you're gonna fucking do that? I go, park a car? Yeah, you're gonna fucking park a car in that spot? I go, yeah, dude, I'm good. He goes, you really wanna do that? I go, of course I do. He goes, think about that. You wanna think about what you're doing right now? You wanna think about it? I go, I don't wanna think about it. He goes, dude, you should think about it. Now here's the thing, guys. As I thought about it, I also thought this. When I started out in comedy, I got my start by doing a Mark Wahlberg character, okay? But, yeah. Some of you know it, all right? For those of you who don't know it, <laughs> it's better than you think it's going to be. <laughs> it's better. But here's the thing. I wanted to go full Wahlberg on this guy. But if you go full Wahlberg, <laughs> guys, it takes five days and three five Ks to come back out of it, all right? You don't just go full Wahlberg. But I wanted to just a little bit. I just wanted to go. First of all, what is this stance? Guys, I never stand like this at any other point in my life. I just wanted to go, where did the gum come from? Okay. See, you dip in, you dip in. It's like a Ouija board. You don't know what's gonna come out. I go, you really wanna fucking do this, dude? You wanna go? You wanna go? Oh, you wanna go with me? You wanna go? You guys don't even understand. When I talk like this, when I talk like this, I get so big down here. You don't understand. You don't understand. When I talk like this, everybody's a third. You don't understand. I wanted to look at this dude. I wanted to look at this guy right in the eye. I wanted to look at him in his normal person eyes. And I just wanted to say to this guy, you wanna do this? You wanna go? You wanna go, motherfucker? Oh, you got a baseball bat? Well, I got two lone survivors right here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, you wanna go? Oh, you don't think I can handle you? Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call Donnie. I'm gonna get Donnie down here. I'm gonna beat the shit out of Donnie. Then I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I wanted to. I wanted to. But I didn't. I didn't. 
I just looked at him and I go, what is your deal, man? He goes, you want to know my fucking deal? I go, yes, I want to know your deal. He goes, dude, I was back up here and I was in the corner and I was half in the toe zone, half of the spot. And in front of me, there was a little SUV and somebody's in the passenger seat and they're waiting for their friend and they never fucking move. And then you come around and you take this spot from me and I don't fit in this spot and I don't get this spot and I don't get any spot at all. And guys, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to put some goodness into this world. And I said, hey, man. He goes, what? I go, dude. You can have it. He goes, you know what you can do? I go, you're not listening to me. He goes, you're not listening to me. I go, no, I think I am. He goes, no, you're not, dude, because I'm trying to tell you. You take your little car back into the spot behind the SUV in that exposed curb, and you can fit in that spot, and I get this spot, and you get that spot. We both win. And I was like, oh, my God, are we in the meanest nights off of all time right now? I don't even know his name. I call him Jerry. I go, Jerry, let's do it. He goes, let's fucking do it then. <laughs> so I take my car. I back all the way up to the very first spot, the corner I just come around. There's exposed curb. There's a tow zone. There's a little SUV. Somebody's in the passenger seat waiting for their friend, right? I pull in. I back up right behind them. I look up. Jerry's putting his big old Tahoe in that big old spot. Guys, Jerry's so happy, he's going to hit his kids one less time tonight. <laughs> And I did that for those kids, all right? <laughs> he gets all parked in. I get out of my car because I just want to check. I walk around to the back, and I look, and I don't fit. I don't fit. But it's fine. It's fine, guys. Because sometimes the gift that you give is better than the gift that you get back, right? You should never do anything because you want someone to love you. You should do it because you love them. Uh, that I, sh I should say a lot more things like that. <laughs> But it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I did something for him, okay? So I get into my car, I shut the door, windows are still down, thank God. Because as soon as I shut the door, I just hear, yo! And I look, it's Jerry, he was watching me. I go, hey man, he goes, the fuck you doing, dude? I go, oh, I, I don't fit, I'm in the toe zone, and these people, this guy still hasn't left, he's waiting for a sign, you don't fit. I go, no nah, dude, I don't fit. What the fuck, I go, hey, it's fine, dude. He goes, nah, dude, fuck that. I go, Jerry, it's fine. He goes, dude. Fuck that. Jerry walks straight across the street to the car in front of me. He opens the driver's side door. Could you imagine, guys? You're sitting there waiting for your friend. The door opens. You look. It's Jerry. You'd be like, well, I'm getting sex trafficked. Today's the day I got sex trafficked. He opens the door and he goes, you motherfucker, I was parked behind here waiting for your fucking friend to come back. He never fucking comes back. Then I go over here and I get in a fucking fight with this dude, but then I send him over here. Now my friend, my friend, guys, my friend. I went from having a bully to having a henchman, okay? He goes, my friend needs a spot, so I don't care what you do, but you move this cab right fucking now. This dude jumps out of the car. He runs around the back. He's looking at me the whole time. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. Jerry gets like this. He gets like this. He runs around. He jumps in the open door. Jerry slams the door. The guy drives off. Ostensibly, this guy just stole his own friend's car. Jerry doesn't go anywhere because he's a care jerk. He stays right there and he just goes, all right, dude, come up, come up, come up, come up. You're good, dude, you're good. I'm like, I know we're good, Jerry. We could put a pontoon boat here. <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good, stop. Stop, dude, stop. You're good, you're good, stop, stop. You're good, you're good. He turns, he starts to walk away. And he goes, hey. And I go, yeah? He goes, hey. Uh, um. We did something good here today. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, sure, sure, man. I mean, not if you ask the guy that you just made carjack himself. <laughs> but sure. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, yeah? Hey, uh, uh. Uh, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I said, thanks, man. And then he just turned and disappeared into the Guinness Mists of Boston. Yeah. Yeah. 
I watched him walk away and I thought to myself, I don't think I've ever felt like this before. <laughs> I mean, you guys, you, you think about it, like, sure, Jerry and I fought, right? We yelled at each other, he yelled at me, I yelled at him, but then we heard each other, we listened to each other, we found out what we could do for each other. Guys, Jerry, he looked out for me. He stuck up for me. He was proud of me, guys. <laughs> yeah, he was proud of me. And I was like, I don't, I really don't think I've ever had a feeling like this before. Maybe some of you guys have never had that feeling either. And you're, you're gonna leave here tonight with a little piece of Jerry inside of you. And that, that's not as gross as it sounds. <laughs> But I'll say that I thought this, this, this. This must be what it's like to have a dad. I have no idea, guys. But I know that if I ever get married, Jerry's giving my basic bitch ass away. I know that. Yeah. Guys, I'm Daniel Van Kirk. Thank you very much. Be nice to each other. Enjoy it.